What's up, Fight Fans? And we're back at it with another edition of Round One Sports TV. Nayoya Inoue and Marlon Tapales just wrapped up their legendary undisputed status for all four belts at 122 pounds at the Super Bantamweight Division. Now, um, we're going to be breaking down where he stands today in the pound for pound raking. So if you like the videos, please give the videos a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel, share the videos, and like always, let's get right into this video. Now, uh, Nayo Yainoue and Marlon Tapales battled it out in Japan to unify all four belts at the 122 pound um, bantamweight, super bantamweight division. Now, a lot of people, um, spectators, including myself, going into this fight did not give Marlon Tapales a, a, you know, a, a shot of winning. I, I thought that the Nayoya Inoue was going to end this fight within four rounds. Three to four rounds is what I thought. He put up a much better performance and hats off to him and his teams. And correct, congratulations to the effort. You did amazing. Now, the Japanese monster now, he has stated that he would like to stay in the 122 pound weight division. And who will he fight or challenge? So right now, as of right now, there are three names that come to mind. And in no particular order, I'm going to, you know, see what you think about these three fighters. And then I have, a, you know, an honorable mention. Okay, in no particular order. We're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to Boxing Records, in fact. And I want to pull their, their actual, like, records. So we're going to go with MJ starting off the list. Um, Akhmedalia, he comes to us with a record of 12 fights. Nine knockouts and one loss. He has a 75% knockout ratio. He stands at 5-5. Five, five, okay. Uh, he's coming off his last impressive performance, which was a WBA title eliminator, which puts him in the conversation. Okay. Um, we also have, and like I said, I repeat, this is in no particular order. We have Luis Norris, right? He comes to us with a record of 35 fights, 27 big ways by knockout, and one loss, okay? He has a 77% knockout ratio. He's 5'5". Five five. He's a Mexican fighter, and um, I think, you know, although a little wild in his approach, he can take a punch, okay? And he can give one, too, as well, uh, whether or not. You know, it's yet to be seen whether he can take the Japanese superstar's power and be able to give something back in return. Uh, that yet, you know, that's yet to be seen. So, uh, the next fighter that I find interesting um, that comes into mind is Sam Goodman. Okay, Sam Goodman comes to us with a record of 17 and 0. He's undefeated. All right, uh, but he only has a 41% knockout ratio, okay? But what he lacks in power, he makes up for it in volume of punches, um, footwork, uh, slickness, speed, okay? Uh, he has skills, and that would be probably an interesting matchup because Goodman brings a selection of punches that, you know, like Luis Nares, you know, He's going to be more of a forward pressure. I believe the best version of that we've seen was just Saturday night's Marlon Tapales. So, speaking of which, in the fight with Nayoya Inoue, some of my subscribers even stated that the referee had a long count in that fight. You have to keep it in mind that sometimes the powers that be, the people that are backing the Japanese superstar don't have control of all aspects. Remember, the refereeing are not affiliated or connection to any of the major sanctioning body. They are a hired outside source. They usually don't announce the referee until the night of the fight. So that's why that way people don't get to them. You see? So, but there's ways around everything. 
Now, I'm not saying that the ref was in on it. Who knows? But there's a lot of other ways that they might try to rob or steal um, a fight from the Japanese superstar to, to disrail him, okay? But, so let's take a look at the judging of the fight. How were the three judges scoring the fight? And here are the three judges' scorecards in the fight. One of the judges scored it 88-82. The next judge scored it 89-81. The next judge scored it 90-80. And the fan scorecard, online fan scorecard, was 89-81, which coincides with the middle judge's scorecard. Each goal card was one point off, which was one round off, either north of the equator or south of the equator. So that judging was pretty spot on. That was good judging, good officiating right there. Um, as far as the pound for pound ranking, where does the Japanese superstar um, lie? So I went and I looked it up. I wanted to see where he lied this morning. So according to... Um, now, some of the people's pound for pound rating, depending on who you go check out, it's a little bit different. Uh, but the pound for pound rating right now that I'm looking up, um, top rank issued out one, and they have the following as such they have Shakur Stevenson coming in at number 10, they have They have Javante Tank Davis coming in at number nine. They have Errol Spence Jr. coming in at number eight. They got Tyson Fury coming in at number seven. They got Demetrius Bivo coming at number six. They got Devin Haney coming in at number five. They have Uzik coming in at number four. They have um, Canelo Alvarez coming in at number three. And the number two fighter pound for pound in the world is... Terrence Bud Crawford, the number one fighter in the world, according to boxing pound for pound rankings, is the Japanese fighter Naoya Inoue. Congratulations for becoming the world's pound for pound fighter. It's about time. I think it's overdue, but we'll take it. Okay. Um, he's gotten here. Uh, I believe that his performance and the way he is doing it. Uh, catapulted him into the forefront. Now, this is going to put Terrence Crawford in an awkward situation, being that the fact that he's stuck in a rematch claw against Errol Spence Jr., which, from what I'm, if I'm correct, the fight will be held at 154, and that's for no belts. So, even if he goes out and he beats the shit out of Errol Spence Jr., he's already done that. And this time, he would have not accomplished any. And if he takes this fight at 154, it also is not for a title fight. So, yeah. I don't think by him beating Errol Spence Jr., it should catapult him back in front of Nayoya in a way. It's nothing special. So, um... It's good to see that the Japanese superstar is getting his just dudes and his flowers now. But I believe it's time for him to venture out to the U.S. and put on some big fights out here. Whichever of these men he chooses to fight, which an honorable mention will be Casamera. Casamera is an honorable mention. Um, but being the fact that, you know, he lost and whatnot, um, I believe that those three men are the three men that more or less stand in line to be get a crack at it at the next Japanese superstar's next opponent. Um, I don't think he's in a rush to move up to 126 because right away you go up there, you fight one of the champions. I might he he might be the champion, but the Japanese superstar might have to carry the night. He doesn't have the uh, uh, a good dancing partner where he brings a lot of buzz with him too as well. He needs a bigger dancing partner. But I believe if you put a fight against him and um, MJ 
and you put that fight in Las Vegas, that would be a good fight. Another good fight would be, um, but it would be at a catch weight, and it wouldn't be in defense for his four belts, so I don't think he would take it, would be against Vasil Hightech Lomachenko. We're talking about a guy gaining three pounds and one guy losing three pounds, and they can meet each other there. But that wouldn't be for titles, and I don't think that the Japanese superstar would be interested in that fight just yet. I don't think he wants to snap his record for just that. So, um, he'll, he'll make, I believe, in 2024, one or two title defenses, and hopefully he moves up, starts to venture out, See where he ends up. It's very interesting to watch this man move through the divisions. I can't wait until his next opponent is announced. Tell me who you think he should fight next. and Or who would you like him to fight? You know, we'll take a poll. You know, we'll see how many people say one, which one of the guys. Or if you have another guy in mind, please, I would like to hear it. Okay? Uh, so... Another big history um, night for boxing. The Japanese superstar has really solidified himself as a global superstar. Uh, right now, he needs just to put the nail in the coffin and come to the U.S. and just make it official for all of us. I believe in the U.S. they will support him. I believe more fans are, are starting to notice who he is and what he is doing. And I believe that we should really get behind um, our elite fighters and show them um, support for our sport so that it brings and attracts more fans and keeps the sport alive. So if you like the videos, please don't forget to give this video a like. Uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share the videos, and like always, I'm on to the next one. Peace.